Alright, what's up Dragon Brood? Today we are going to be rocking some Bard class, but this is kind of an update, but really takes advantage of a lot of cards from the new set. And this is something a few of y'all have asked about here and on the stream, so I was like, you know what, it's time for me to do a Bard class list. But mostly because of a particular card, and that's Rocco Cabaretti Caterer, which the dude must be awesome and all his shakes bring the boys to the yard or something because this card really does some big stuff for us. I think y'all are going to enjoy it in this list. So let's go get to it. If you're looking for awesome protective gear for your cards, be sure to check out shop.ultrapro.com slash powerdragon and use promo code powerdragon to save 5%. And that's on everything on the site, including this month's Ocean Blue collection or anything else you decide to pick up. Okay, so we're starting out this list with four strangles. Not a surprise. You need to have some removal, and this is kind of like the cheapest thing we can play. It's kind of unfortunate that it's a sorcery, but other than that, it kind of does most of what we need to do, and it can get rid of most Planeswalkers with just a touch of help at most. So we're going to see if it does what we need here. We're going to try two Commune with Spirits, because I like the idea of being able to go grab a Bard class if we need it, but I'm also trying to build the deck in a way that if we don't get Bard class, the cards we get still function pretty well. Then we have two Goro Goro, because giving everything haste when you're mid-combo, effectively, is really good. Uh, Magda, no surprise, we all know what Magda does here. But we do have the ability to tap Magda for mana later, which could also be very nice. And then Bard Class. Of course, if you don't know what this is, it's a two-mana enchantment that lets all your legendary creatures enter with a plus one, plus one on them. And you can pay two, so then they cost a green and a red lust, and then you can pay five, and every time you cast one, you get to exile two cards, and you can play those until end of turn. So... Really good card all around for obvious reasons. Now, we are playing Targnar because when you Bard class bonus up, you get to play it for free, so there's no way we're not playing this. Plus, the attack bonus on Targnar really does come into play multiple times. Uh, since we're into going to be in a third color, oh, excuse me, we are going to play one Red Dane just because we kind of want to be able to slow down the control decks, and with the help of Rocco, we can go fetch this out. So, we're going to try one and see what happens. We're going to go ahead and play two Burgi here. It uh, gives us the option of getting some extra mana to do some things we want, especially once we're mid-combo. However, if you wanted to play just one Burgi and one of something else, I think that's totally reasonable, especially since we're playing the Rockos. But just something to think about. We are playing three Eska, God of the World Tree, or God of the Tree. And this is interesting because we can actually play the Prismatic Bridge in this deck a couple different ways. But... You don't get to shrink this down to accept just a two mana, but it's so big at a once you get get it down with the bard class and it has a two five, five toughness is huge right now. And you can block damn near everything for a couple of turns, and that's all you need sometimes. So don't undervalue Eska based on the board state that you're up against. Then we have one Kadama the Rest Tree. Now we do have enough basics that we can go fetch out a few of them, but we're mostly playing this as another option for trample, a cheap option for trample, honestly. Because that's another thing, too. You get into these little bit of stalemates, but you can pump your creatures to, like, a 6 or an 8, and you can't quite punch through. This can really solve that for you. Now, the other thing is, if you do get to attack with a couple things, getting those lands is pretty big, because once you start trying to combo off with the Bard class, you don't really stall out. One, because you're drawing fewer lands, but two, because you have all the mana that you need. Then we're going to play two copies of Mix Beloved Ranger, mostly because... Getting two creatures is pretty good, right? And if you get them under the Bard Clash, you get a 4-4 four, four, and a 2-2 two, two for effectively one mana. Like, that's hard to beat. And then just the ability to be able to pump something else, especially if it possibly has Trample, is also very good. So we like a lot of things this card can do for the deck. Of course, Alana and Elena, because if we get them for two mana, they're even better than normal. And then Jetmir actually fits in here. Now, you do still have to pay two for it, but we do often have three plus creatures, which means you're getting to attack with Vigilance, which is great. And then if you get to where you have Trample, rarely will we get to Double Strike. But even if you just get to Trample, that's going to be good enough. Like, that's going to end the game a lot of the time. Then, of course, Rocco lets us go find whatever we need. And this is huge because you can go get Alana and Elena. If you need bonuses, you can go get Jetmir. If you just need to Trample... You can go get Burgi if you want to set up a big turn after that, right? Like, lot hell, you can just go get Goro Goro, right? If you just need to give everything uh, haste because you're you're kind of stuck, right? So there's a lot of things you could do with this card that we really like. Uh, as far as the lands, we're all over the place here. So we've got two Den of the Bugbear, two Mountain, a Sakinzen, Poseidon, two Forest, Lair of the Hydra, Blightstep Pathway, three Crag Crown, three Rockfall Veil, one Needle Verge, two Sundown, one Branch Loft, three Overgrown Farmland, and one Bark Channel Pathway. Now, you may be asking why the Bark Channel Pathway and why the Blightstep Pathway. We're giving ourselves a couple more outs to easy cast 
the prismatic bridge if we draw it, right? So if we get those lands, we can put it on black or on blue, and then we only really need like one treasure or something or whatever, or one tapped creature from an Eska or whatever to be able to cast it. So just giving ourselves some outs and some opportunity is all we're doing there. But yeah, we're gonna play some games, have some fun. We'll definitely have some updates to this because I don't know which of these creatures we're gonna like more or less. So catch that up on the back end of the video for sure, even if you don't watch the games, so we can kind of figure out what's going on here. Some of y'all seem to have been confused and when you download a list, I'm like, ah, oh, it's not the same as in the video. Well, yeah, because I tell you about that at the end of the video. I literally tell you here to go to the end of the video where I tell you after playing the games what we learned and what cards we like or don't like or why I might switch stuff in the deck list. So anyway, go watch the games, have some fun. We'll catch you on the other side. Okay, this ain't so bad. We'll, we'll try to make a go of this. I don't know if we want two bard classes, but I guess if something happens to the first one. Also right now, the only thing we have to play is Halan Elena, and the partners by themselves are not really what you want to be casting. So, not the best. Though, if we can get a green land, being able to get down an Eska could be kind of cool. Wouldn't be mad about that. Brush fire on I won't be able to block that next turn, sadly, regardless of the situation. Oh, this is not good either. All right, well, we're just going to take a beating. Plus side is if we get a land, we will have access to Goro and Halan and Elena. I mean, worst case scenario, I guess we could just strangle something and play a Goro Goro. As a 3-3. Jewel Thief. Alright. That's a thing. Ah, oh, boy. Man, I really need to play an Eska here, but we, we can't. We just can't afford to. I want to, but we really can't. There's Vigilance and Trample. Do we want to try to just kill the Brushfire Elemental? Nah, we'll kill this. Because we got to keep finding land for the Brushfire. Alright, we ain't blocking. Actually, maybe we are blocking. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, whenever you attack, double target creatures, power. Great. Well, now I guess I kind of have to block it, don't I? You forced my hand, opponent. You forced my hand. Oh, they had a goal down. Okay. Weird deck, but neat. Uh, especially while we're here doing nothing. <laughs> uh, all right. We're going to try our best. Stuck on two lands. I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, I guess next turn... Nah, we still need another land. I was thinking we could Halan and Elena into a Jet Mirror or some such, but that's not necessarily going to do it either. Okay. We just take seven. Yep. Okay, come on, deck. Oh, and of course, that's the land we get. Wow. Uh, some days it's like that. I mean, we get to attack with Vigilance, so sure. All right. We need to somehow find a way to survive this turn. I don't know what that's going to look like. It does not look like that. Yep. And that's 10, so sadly we have to double block it. Which means they get to take out one of our creatures. Probably going to be Eska, because that's what I would take out, all things considered. Especially since I'm stuck on mana. Nope, they want Halan and Elena dead. Fair enough. Oh no, okay. I thought they were stacking them the other way. That was just the first strike showing off. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of Alana and Alana. We'll play another Eska. 
put counters on it again. Attack with it only. Yeah. Don't want to risk damage unnecessarily here. Alright. The fact that the opponent's blocking is kind of good for us. When the aggro decks have to start blocking, that, that's a positive sign. Now, we could just Jet Mirror here. I'm trying to think what kind of trouble we can get into. I think we just Jet Mirror. I mean, if you can do something about this, then so be it. But now they're in a situation where even attacking... Like, if they kill Jetmir and attack for two, that doesn't do that much for them. Oh, I don't know how we won that. <laughs> okay, we get to go first. We do have one green. We need another one, but uh, this is mostly fine. Probably start with Magda, just so we could be cheeky on the third turn and maybe try to sneak a Eska down. But, you know... That being said, we just drew another green source. And the reality is, if they play a tap land and maybe don't do anything to Magda, we might wait and just try to play the Prismatic Bridge. Speaking of, we are just going to attack here. Actually, I missed a point. We could have just played this because the little mouse or whatever, the hamster has, has haste. I totally forgot. Uh, but yeah, I think we go and just run this out anyway. Give the opponent something else to focus on. Uh, in the turn. So now next turn we can attack. We have three colors plus two treasure. We could just play the prismatic bridge and see what the opponent's up to. Yep, you got it, dude. I am willing to throw that Magda away. Actually, do we just attack with all three and get some amount of damage in here? I think we do. Because we're not blocking Rafine anyway, right? Alright, sounds good to me. They take four. Should be at 13 because I'm a goofball. But uh, we're going to go ahead and do this. And then hope it sticks. It's kind of like our best plan at the moment. In the turn. I mean, they've got a lot of cards. They've got all their mana colors. They can dig for something when they attack. However, though, if they dig for something and, like, let's say they attack and kill the Prismatic Bridge, we would be able to attack for quite a lot of damage. That would be three, six, seven, eight. That's a pretty big chunk. Ooh, they did nothing and they're going to let us... All right, we got a Magda. That's cool. I ain't mad about that. What if we spend the mana and juice up a boo? Is that what we want to do? It becomes plus X plus X. Don't think we want to activate the land. They obviously left mana open for a reason, so we don't want to even get into that. Um... Kind of want to hold on to this. So let's just do this for a moment. And the problem is, well, I guess we could do it for three in attack. Right? Just to make it somewhat threatening. All right. And then still leaves this open so we can strangle if after they block. If they choose to block. I mean, that's the other thing. Okay, Interceptor's fine. Like, we can accept that. Okay. They do get some life out of this after they block, though. Rafine does go to block. Excellent. That's what we wanted. That was, that was the whole part of that attack that was important. All right. So now we've kind of broke surf. See if they're going to do something to our prismatic bridge.
Another Rafim. Sure. Sounds good. Let's get something good here. Alright, that's not the worst thing, I guess. Uh, getting one of these, though, is kind of nice. So let's do that. And I don't know if I want to play the... I think I do want to play this as land, because at some point, we're going to want to do multiple spells and get in there with Targnar and all that mess. The only thing... Well, I guess now, if they try to meat hook, they got to kill this first, right? Okay, you know what? I'm going to play Targnar anyway. Could be a risk, because if they kill Redain right now, could be a problem. And then they just wipe the board. They've got Rafine. Then we're attacking with Rafine versus the land. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. We knew that was a possibility, though. I accept it. All seeing Arbiter. Well, damn. All right. That's a thing. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Something gets minus X, so it's going to be negative one. I guess attacking with Magda doesn't do much here now. But it still doesn't want to come over. We're going to tap for a color, so we make a treasure. And we're going to take our turn. Eh, all right. We'll level this up. We'll level this up. And then we'll pass. After that, I think we're just going to start attacking with Targnar since we can just pump it, pump it. Now we're just hoping to get one legend that we can just keep stuff going with now. Because now we got Burji. Burji's going to make mana. We've got Eska. We've kind of got all the parts working. So now we need to see if we can just go off next turn. We're, we're in the combo zone, if you will. My opponent's only going to have two cards, though they have filtered cards a couple of times. So there's a chance. Yep, Burgie's going to be small. That's okay. Her ability is not relevant to her power. Or her power is not relevant to her ability, I should say. All right. Thanks. I'll be what else you got for us? Now. All right, come on. Be something good, deck. Don't do us wrong. Nope. The opponent's got something they might want to do here. Maybe. Actually, a girl girl would be kind of sweet. Because that's, that's one of the keys. If we can give everything haste, that's really what we'd be looking to do. Is this where we play any legendary... Cast a legendary spell. Ugh. How awful. Damn. Well, that sucked. Well. Huh. I kind of want to hold on to it in case we get a horn. But. Uh, opponent has three mana open. We have to assume at least one of those is a removal creature of or card of some kind. So what's the best we could do? We could pump Eska... Attack with Targnar. Are those the only two? Seems kind of lame. Could activate this. We'd have creatures to still pump Targnar. Guess we do the... Uh, man. Alright. I'm going to gamble. Probably a bad gamble, but we're going to gamble. They let us have that. Hmm. Okay, you get to attack, you get to attack. You and you. I don't even know if we attack with Magda here or not. I have a feeling they're just going to flash in another creature. Another one of the interceptors or whatever. Uh, that, that. This is going to be plus one. This is going to be plus one. This is going to be a four. Obviously, attacking with Burji does nothing here. Beneficial. 
I think we just hold on to Magda. All right. Those are going to be our attackers. Still a fair amount of damage. Interceptor's still really strong here. Yep. Gain some life. Get to block something. Sure. Shrink the power of something. Could shrink the power of Targnar, and then we'd have to, like, hit Targnar in response and pump it up, which would be kind of funny. All right. How you want to do it? All right. Well, we'll get rid of the Arbiter, which isn't legendary. So if they had another one, they probably would have just played it. So let's go ahead and pump this. Uh, okay, it did tap correctly. Because like, I want to make sure we tap Magda. Okay, that wasn't too bad of a turn. All right, I'm good with that. I mean, considering we still have Bard class, which is souped up. Even if they had, like, a uh, meat hook, we can go for one, two, three, four, five. We'd still have Esco. Okay, you got a Blood Chief six. Fair enough. All right, that does limit some of our mana for next turn, but the opponent's down to one card. Technically two, because they can attack here. Okay, they're choosing not to attack. No That's good. That gains them a little life. All right, be something deck. Just... We have all legends in here. Let's hit one so we can just start going off. Oh, dang it. We found Rocco. Who's not bad, mind you, but uh, doesn't do much once it's in play. I'd like to draw that. That would have been a really good draw. So, what do we do here? We'll go ahead and play this. See what we find. Nothing. Mm, a jet mirror would have been sweet too. Uh, then what is our next choice? We just give Rocco a bonus and attack with people. I'm trying to think what the best attack is here, because we've already piled up a bunch of treasure. Yeah, opponent gives up anyway. Alrighty, what do we get to do with this? Uh, I guess we keep it. We got all of our colors, technically. Um, we do have a way to kill the opponent's first creatures, so we could possibly open with Magda, get rid of something. Don't really get any trickery stuff with Kodama. Okay, this isn't a bad start. So if we can find a land here, we can kill something, attack, play something. Oh, we don't even have to kill anything here, so that's kind of nice. I'm always worried, though, when I see people play Path of the World Tree, because usually they're doing something way out of bounds. Like, nobody just plays Path of the World Tree. Uh, we're usually doing something crazy. Let's play this, play this, we'll attack. See what the opponent wants to do here in the turn. And then now we have our choice of Halan and Elena. Do we want to strangle something? Play Goro Goro options. Oh, we might be losing creatures now, though. There's some black mana. Kaya. I'm here on Gatewatch business, so um, stay out of my way. Just why would they I just run out of naked Kaya? That seems odd. Alright, so we'll do this. Put this on here. Send this at Kaya. Send this set. Whoa, I did that wrong. I'm not going to get a free land here. That's okay, though. I don't deserve this. In the turn. So they're doing something with tokens. Pony just says, oops. Half the time, that's a trap when they say that. Attacking with everything? Oh, no, I guess it wasn't a trap this time. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 
Uh, decline. We have nothing else to go get. Um, I guess if I'd have known that, I could have got two more points in there. But, yeah. Just end the turn, I guess. Not sure what they do here. Yeah, I was going to say, because we've got Targnar and this. So we could play them both and attack with haste. So that would have been game anyway. Yep. GG's. We're just going to play this for insurance purposes. And then everybody's going to attack. Yep. Yeah, not sure what the opponent's deck does there. Um, Kaya, Ren and Seven. Very curious. Very curious. Oh boy. Um, yeah, let's keep it. Heck, let's see what happens. There's there's some options here. We play Goro on two. Maybe try Burji, see if she lives. If so, there's then some combinations of like play Rocco, get a mana back, try to strangle. It's going to be a little weird. It's going to be a little weird. We're going to have to work at it. I almost want to put this on white since we have multiple lands in case something happens to one of our other lands, which seems pretty stupid on turn two that I'm worried about that, but I'm going to do it anyway. And if it bites us in the butt, so be it. We're going to have three lands with green anyway. If it was red, I think it'd be a little bit of a different story because we have a couple things that could use the extra mana, but even then we have Burji. Oh, Goro, you dead, friend. There's a bullet on your head. Nope. There's a Giada. We will not be letting Giada live, folks. In case you were wondering. Oh, actually, hold that thought. If we want to kill Giada, we actually can't play the Bard class here. Poop. You know what? Serves me right for putting that on white. <laughs> Lesson learned. I'm being appropriately punished. All right. see what we can do here. Alright, Righteous Valkyrie. Sounds good. Ooh, good to have that in hand. We we can enjoy that hopefully in a little while. And just pass. Yeah, not putting that on green is the whole difference in this game. Like, should have just been on green, we'd have been fine. Now I'm in trouble. Alright. Reduce some costs. We can play this for one extra. Not any good. We could play this. Not great. We can just go ahead and play Burji and get a 4-4 four, four, and that's something. And then we could try to go off with these the next turn. So let's do that. No attacks. Now, whatever they play here is going to come in as a 6 toughness most likely. Which is probably going to be one of their enchantments. So that's not great. Okay, just a Vanishing Verse. That's actually good for us, especially considering we have another Goro Goro. That could have been way worse. All right, and another Angel? With their Giada mana? It was. Okay. Good stuff to know. All right, there's another Red Land. Important. Now the question is, do we go get a Blocker? I mean, we could search for a lot of things with uh, Rocco here. I'm trying to think... Do we go get... Actually, Helena and Elena would be kind of sweet. Because if we do Rocco for 1, 2, 3, 4, we get one back. We get Helena and Elena into play. We get this and gets... Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep. We'll go get these peeps. Then we'll use the free one. Which then we can give everybody haste. And then put the bonus on, I guess this. And then a taxis. I mean, because they can double block down on Helena and Elena. That's fine. We get to kill Giada. Which they might just have another one, but whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's put Giada at risk or don't. 
I don't care. You can block Rocco. That's a safe block. Or if you just want to block Bergie. But that's 13 getting through otherwise if you're trying to protect Giada here. Yep. Okay. Now what do we got after this? Oh, that's a lot of extra life. Yep. That sucks. Okay, we're on the verge of death here. So this is not great. If we tried to level this up, that is not going to be nearly enough. I guess the best thing we could do is... Actually, you only cost two. One, two, three, four, five. Nah, we just wouldn't have a way. Pretty sad. Wouldn't have a way to do what we need to do. Let's just do this. Uh, we could give Jetmir extra there, but I don't think we do. I think the plan here is just level this up to try to give us a shot next turn to go off. And here, we probably just Goro Goro for a big hit. I mean, they double block. Nope, nope, they're just giving that up. I mean, it goes back to their hand, so, you know, whatever, whatever. Okay. Now our plan is just get a pile of creatures off the top. We need to draw a legendary thing. That's step one. If we can get a legendary thing, I think we might be able to pull this off. But if not, it's going to be very difficult. Opponent can just kill us now. Can the opponent... 13? Oh, I guess they'd be one short. 13, 15? Yeah, I guess so. I guess we could also block with an on the lineup. But now nah, we'll just take it. Opponent gains a bunch. Their creatures are big. Nothing we're going to do about it if we don't get our cards here anyway. So, here we go. Hopefully we can keep a good cycle of things happening. There's a Targnar. There's a blocker, actually. That's not bad. Let's play this. Actually, playing Valgmira might be good here, too. Believe it or not. Um. Hmm. 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 Questions. Issues. Problems here. All right, we're going to do this. I think the goal is still just to get more things so we can just get all the double strike from Jetmir or whatever. Problem. Good thing this is free. Oh, no. No, deck. Really? Bruh. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's so terrible. Oh my goodness. Do I have any way to play around this? I don't know that we do. Damn. This is hurtful. I mean, I guess we can make a dragon. That's something, but is that even enough of anything? <clears throat> Give everything haste. Go to the next step. Make this one big. Attack with this, this, because that's just going to die anyway. This pumps everything. Actually, we're getting trample, so maybe? Eh, you got a lot of toughness over there. Don't want to put Halana and Elena at risk, obviously, because that's another blocker, potentially. Damn, that was pretty sad on the bard class situation. All right. And we can still double pump. Well, we can single pump Targnar. So that's still a thing. Don't know if maybe attacking there was a good play, potentially. All right. This is also good, too, because the opponent blocks in a way that's been... Oh, uh, they actually still... Yeah, 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 they block in a way that's beneficial to us. We actually get to kill the Righteous Valkyrie, too. So that's not so bad. Because we have the strangle. 
And since the other creatures will already have taken damage, they will also die. Now they're going to go back to their hand, so that's that whole song and dance again. But uh, is what it is. So opponent's going to take 11 and 6 is 17. They're going to take another... Hmm. Do we want to make a dragon then? 17s. They're going to take 18 and go to 10. Granted, they're going to be able to gain a bunch next turn or whatever. We know that. But is it worth it to pump Targnar here? Or do we want to just make a dragon? This only pumps its power, not its toughness. Oh, it does dump power and toughness. Oh, never mind. Then yes, we absolutely want to. All right. I think that's the best we can do. All right. Whew. Almost missed it. All right, we'll keep this. Getting a third land would be great, but this is a reasonable start at least. Get to Bard class on two. Can even play Targnar and Burji. Actually, we could play Targnar, Burji, Goro, Goro all in the same turn. That'd be a good turn. Assuming we get to keep the Bard class. We may not if they've got an Apparition here. He's an Adeline, though. That's a relevant card. Okay. Okie dokie, let's level this up. Ooh, hold on. I'm going to have to put this on green and not on white, right? Uh, I'm not going to be able to play it. Yeah, I have to play it on green if I want to be able to play Burji here. Actually, yeah, there's still no way. I miscounted. There's really no way I can do that. Because Burji's going to take two no matter what. So we can play Targnar as a 3-3. We can play Magda as a 1-1. One, one. Or a plus 1. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I said 1-1. One, one. Alright. So now they can obviously exile some things or whatever, but we'll see what we can do on the following turn. Brutal Cathar. Probably takes away the Targnar. Makes sense. Sure, we'll take seven. Block this duder. All right, untapped land. Okay, it is an untapped land. I don't know if it was one that actually helps us, but it is an untapped land. So let's go ahead and do this. And play this. Tapped. Uh, technically, we could give stuff haste, but I don't think it's beneficial. So, actually, we could make two one ones here, though, right? Because it's cheaper for the number of things. I mean, I guess we might as well do that. Nah, because we might need mana to pump up next turn. I don't know how we're going to survive long enough for that to be relevant, but we'll see. Situation here might be. Yeah, exactly. They get rid of Bergia here, and now we just have to double block stuff we don't want to. Probably double block out of line, take too much and die. Yeah, opponent, you should probably just attack with everything there. Would have been my suggestion. Yeah, we got nothing. <laughs> we got nothing. All right, we're keeping this. Don't know if we're going to be nearly fast enough against this deck. I've seen some versions of that, of various things that are coming out with Commando versus Kakazan that could be super fast. And uh, if this is in... Okay, well, it wasn't a Luminarch Aspirant, so we got a little bit lucky there. That could have been way worse. Let's put this on, I guess, red. Go ahead and play one of these. Now, our plan next turn, if we get to keep the Bard class, is going to be level up Bard class, probably only get to play Goro Goro. But it will be a 3-3, three, three, but we'll see what that does for the following turns. Oh, that's so much damage. 
Yep. Not a lot we could say or do about that. Yeah, we kind of got to buy in on this, unfortunately. All right. And we're probably going to assume this is dead. I think that's a fairly safe assumption, especially this turn gets worse if they have, like, Angel Fire Ignition, which they very well might. All right. Dead girl, girl. Fair enough. All right. And that does have Trample, so we need to keep that in mind, too. All right, is there a benefit to playing another one of these? Not right now. I mean, we're definitely going to play this as a land. I was just thinking, playing another Bard class, but we don't get really anything out of it. I mean, we'd just make this cheaper, but then we wouldn't be able to play anything. We have four mana. This at least is a reasonable blocker. Making us a 1-5. And if we're willing to just trade a Magda, I mean, I guess it's mostly okay. Nah, let's just make this. This is a 4-4. Four, four. And we'll see what happens here. Brutal Cathar. All right. Probably takes out. Yep. Makes sense. We block the etchings. Oh, they had more land. Yep. Oh, oh. We didn't lose our duder. Hold on a second. Hold, hold up. Maybe we could do some things here. All right, so if we play this and level it, we'll still get a free Targnar, and we could tap Eska to get a 3-4 or 4-3 Magda, and we'd have a 4-4 Targnar. Or we could just level this up, try to get cards, but I think we'd try to do that next turn. If we're even alive. I mean, opponent, well, there's no telling what the opponent has. We could already be in trouble and just not know it. All right. I think we can survive this turn. Again, barring the opponent have, like, Angel Fire Ignition or something. Make, giving us some bad blocks or whatever. But it's possible. All right. Nothing from the opponent. So now if we play multiple things, they will get to steal something. Oh, not good. Not good. Uh, that's real bad. That is very, very, very bad. I think we just leave our creatures untapped. Hit this number here. Can't afford to tap anything else at the moment, unfortunately. And then we have to hope we can just go off. I don't know what the plan is. There's a Thundering Raiju. That might be enough to get us dead. Yep. That's two spells. All right, they're going to get to steal something with their Brute. All right, we need the top of the deck to deliver here. Or even if the top of the deck gave us a, a Strangle, that would be pretty sweet to get rid of a Brutal Cathar. All right. Come on, deck. Don't fail us. I mean... Uh... Boy, as much as I want to do the backside of this, we really can't. We really can't. All right. All right. Targnar is good. That's good. Uh, let's keep... Ooh, I might actually want the mana from the old one, but a 3-6 is actually relevant here with one of the creatures having trample. That's pretty funny. Uh, man, this is going to be free. We're going to have to use three lands for this. We'd be able to tap Magda... Man, I think I'm going to keep the old one. As much as having a 3-6 there is really nice. Ooh. All right. I guess we don't get to play Redane. But we get two other creatures here. Play a land. 
And now we can consider tapping things to play the backside of this. Or we could just do this and go get a ton of different things, actually, right? For three would let us... Actually, we could go get ah, a couple of things here. Wow, we have access to a lot of stuff, y'all. One, two, three, four. Man, I'm sorry, y'all. I gotta do all this math. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. We have access to seven, technically. So we could still do this for five, do this for one, but there's nothing else for one. All right, I'm just gonna do this for one, two, three. I guess we can do it for four. Oh, we did find a strangle. Nice. Go get Helena and Elena. We are going to tap Magda for red. Which also randomly gives us another mana in case we wanted it. There you go. Whew. Had to work our way out of that one. Okay. Um, man. All right, we'll keep this. I don't really like... I mean, it's basically like a mulligan to five, though, truthfully, because we're not going to do anything with these. We already have our bard classes, and that's the main reason we play this. But it's not the worst thing. Oh, yeah, we got a white land already as well, so it's not a big deal. All right, we will get a free Targnar. That'll be a 3-3, three, three, and I don't know what we're going to do after that. We really need to draw something good. We might Targnar and try to immune to just go find some land. Might be the best play. Just get stuff out of the deck. Yeah. Why not? Let me go ahead and play this. Get this for options, I guess. And we can always search out the basics. Alright. That is a real issue. Uh, it was an issue. Let's go ahead and do this. Find another land. We will play this one on red. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and kill this duder. So we can at least start entertaining the idea of attacking. Alright. Now we're going to have to be really quick here. Because we're only going to get probably one turn where we get to use a bard class. We almost want to pump it up. Well, that wouldn't even do anything. Yeah, we're just going to lose the bard class, unfortunately. But they're going to give us a card for it, so I guess it's fine. I mean, the other downside is they could just have Invoke, and that would suck. Fun thing, though, is if we leave this up, and they I was going to say, and they didn't kill Targnar, we wouldn't be able to have a token, or have Targnar afterwards. But that's not a thing. So we're just going to pass. No point in leveling it up if we just think we're going to lose it, you know? Because that would totally make sense for the opponent to do here. Though by us not leveling it, I was going to say, there might be the, like, why didn't you level it, you know? Okay, sure. Lantern. Resolve. We're going to discard. Uh, This. Because why not? I'm gonna make duders. So we have other things to sacrifice, too. Oh, deck. Come on now. Come on now. I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna level this. Now I assume they're gonna try to kill it. <clears throat> but maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, I was gonna say. Now it makes sense at least. Okay. The card we get is more land. Wow. Goodness. All right, well, we will discard a card. I mean, Jetmere is something. I assume we're just going to lose everything, but... All right. I mean, got to be waiting on a meat hook, right? Or a blood on the snow. Like, whatever. Tons of options here. Yep. Makes sense.
Ugh. All right. We got nothing. Uh, yeah, we're keeping it. We get to play Bard class, and then we're kind of going to be sitting on some jet mares for a little bit, I think. But maybe we'll find something else to play here with this Magda. So it would be nice. All right, Magda it is. Not sure what we want after this. All right, Magda, you did. I guess the good news here is we can run around a jet mirror just for show. That's not the worst thing, right? Then just play jet mirror. And then play this. Go get a land. And then we could actually pump up our bard class and then have that for backup. This is a lot of damage on board, though. I'm assuming they have a way to kill Jetmir. So I'm going to assume their plan is just flash in our favorite person. So let's go. Really? There's not a Wandering Emperor there? Hmm. All right, then. Um. Well, crap. Uh, I'm a little mind blown. I guess we put this on green and we just level this? I mean, I don't really know what's happening right now. I mean, I can't, like, Jetmere's not going to make it, right? I mean, you can steal my Jetmere. That's cool. You can turn your thing into a Jetmere next turn. Or not, because I'm a jerk. All right. Attack for six. Play a creature land. Eh, I don't know what we do from here, but, I mean, Jetmere's doing his thing, I guess. Opponent still has four cards in hand, so, you know, they're not dead by any stretch. Especially if we're going to draw like that. Eh, I hate it, but if they got the cards, they got the cards. You just got to give them their due. Okay, they didn't have it. All right, I ain't mad at that. That was about as fun as we wanted it to be. What I like about these type of runs is that every card got to do something, right? Everything we put in the deck showed up at some point, served a purpose, did their job. That's what we're really looking for when we do a lot of this stuff. So that, that makes me pretty happy about it. The card I'm going to change the most here, and you will see this in the download, is that I'm going to take out the uh, Commune with Spirits. I don't think we really need it. If there were some other enchantment or whatever that I could justify being in the list, I might consider it. But as it is, we're mostly just using it to dig for lands more often than not. So I'm willing to just cut that and then actually just play two Snakeskin Veil. Because a couple of the games we lost, if we could have just protected a creature, sometimes that's all you have to do in this list. So just playing two cards, it's not a ton, but just a little bit of room to give us some outs, even some combat trickery if we need it with a first striker or something. I think that's going to help so much more than having the commune with spirits. Now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Domri and Ark of Bolas. Now, we probably won't be seeing any more Domri cards because the idiot got himself killed during the War of the Spark, but I think he was before his time. Because you imagine if we could have had that in this deck when we're getting to play Bard class, where like all of our creatures get a bonus and we can make creatures uncounterable and we can get more mana and we have a fight spell. Like, <laughs> this would be so good. Now, the card's still very playable in multiple situations. So if you're looking for a cool, cheap Planeswalker to play that gives you extra mana, if you don't like your opponent countering your creatures, like check this card out. It's still pretty cheap. You're probably not gonna pay more than two or $3 in most places for it. So that's pretty nice. But yeah, just a card I was thinking about would be great in this type of list and it's sad we can't play with it anymore. Now don't forget, like always, you will be able to get this deck list down in the description below along with our Facebook gaming links and Twitch links and other cool stuff. Also, we have merchandise and things, check that out. 
please support the channel if you haven't considered it yet check that out there's a join button it explains all the stuff lots of rewards and if you like this deck i'm gonna link another one here so if you like quirky weird decks check out this one we have with halo fountain that's all i have for you for now we'll see you next time